ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Okay. Hi. Hi, how are you? Well, it's fun to be here and uh, it's uh, fun to be here together and do that together. And uh, it's exciting to have you here. We are in, uh, for those uh, people who uh, might end up watching this, I'll say a few things. We're in Barcelona, okay. near Barcelona on a beach. Maybe you can hear the ocean back there a little bit. And uh, we just met a couple of days ago. Yes. And I thought this was too good an opportunity not to talk to you. You're, you live in Cairo, did it? not to talk to you about uh, your viewpoint and perspective of uh, your life, what's going on in Egypt. I don't really know, we will see. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, first of all, it's uh, I must say it's an honor, Dr. Mac, to be having sitting and showing up and maybe bragging down with my friends. Oh, great. Yeah, somebody made well, an interview with me. Well, I'm going to be with bragging me. with you, so <laughs> okay. we'll be bragging with each other. Here comes our coffee. Yes. Um, I don't know, your question sounds uh -huh. like very, you know, widespread. Yes. There's a lot that's been happening in Egypt. Uh -huh. and obviously, I'm part of it, right. especially the revolution. Mm -hmm. with what's going on? I would, if you could, oops, mm -hmm. if you wouldn't mind, um, maybe you could say a few words about, um, uh, maybe uh, introduce yourself as what do you do in Cairo, yeah. or what you're involved with. You needn't say a lot or a lot, whatever. Okay, I'm I'm um, a cognitive psychologist. Okay. And a life coach. Okay. And I suppose they both complement each other. Uh -huh. uh, I just left recently the corporate world with all its. Uh, Wow. I'm not, I don't want to say glamour, but all its social conditioning yes. and what's around. Yes. I've always wanted to be a teacher, okay. but my ego wouldn't, you know, accept it. Okay. okay what are you going to do, you know, right. teaching, yeah. come on. So, uh, I just pursued it. I had this leap of faith. Okay. And I guess, in parallel, the country had a leap of faith too. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that makes sense. I don't want to say a coincidence, but yes. it happened. I mean, yes. no one could ever imagine in as well the dream that I yes. would see that thing. You know? we, we love, of course, the idea. I love the idea that uh, uh, large social types of transformation also need to be processed on an inner level and mm -hmm. vice versa. Inner transformation frequently goes along with outer transformation. So. Yeah, so I, I guess I was meant to be in that time. You know? Yes. Yes. I guess uh, if I would have a, I have a couple of questions that are sort of being, I've been wondering about. About uh, you were talking about the other day. Well, maybe we sh I should ask you first that because I was very touched when you talked about your own involvement in what happened in Egypt and your experience of feeling one with large groups of people. I think it'd just be great if you could uh, 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 talk about that a little bit and say something about that. Okay, I, I want to highlight that I was one out of millions, uh -huh. a very ordinary person uh -huh. who, pre the revolution, did not have that, you know, uh -huh. I was getting along with what, what is. Uh -huh. uh, yes, inside me, I felt I was more living in that country rather than being part of it uh -huh. or as, as a citizen. Uh -huh. The revolution happened. I don't know how. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, we went. I went in to Tahrir Square, and it uh -huh. was a leap of faith uh -huh. due to security issues. And, yes, and of course. I'm not like a yes. uh, a fighter, someone who's in the streets or used to be in demonstrations. So uh -huh. something was new to me, and I was my heart was pumping uh -huh. as I was uh -huh. going there. Uh -huh. So I was scared to death. Uh -huh. Once I was there. Uh -huh. You know, it keeps coming. I mean, the more you just recap it, uh -huh. there was a gigantic aura, a magnetic magnetic field, uh -huh. where a place from called Abdel Minam Riyadh, where the edges of Tahrir Square starts, uh -huh. the moment you, end, uh -huh. you enter, uh -huh. and then it's, it's nothing physical anymore. It's mm -hmm. just like you're moving there mm -hmm. somehow, I don't know, on, on water or something. Mm -hmm. I must say this, you're loving every single person there. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
And we had the extremes there. I mean, we had the extreme conservatives, the extreme liberals, people wearing differently, thinking <laughs> differently. I didn't see all this. I had my own, my own prejudices against certain sects in the Egyptian society. I don't know, it faded. I didn't remember it. As if my judgment cells stopped. And, uh, and, and you could feel the different air. The, and I, don't know, I don't know how it happened. I don't know. I don't have an explanation. And when you talk about it with others, it's the, exactly the same. How can this be possible with that many people? Yeah. Known that Egyptians so are very disorganized. They, are. <laughs> they love chaos. Okay. They don't stand in lines. They yeah. keep jamming in. They hate lines. They're impatient sometimes. Uh, we have this own judges judgment. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're even okay with litter. Uh -huh. People were picking litter from the streets and the exactly. the the square was clean mm -hmm. with three million people from all sorts of, from everywhere. We were so nice to each other in the sense of, you know, we're just I'm moving in the... And, okay, one thing I remember very well. There were stages, people talking, you know, whether it's socialist stage, the liberal stage, the conservative stage, and there everyone had his own way accepting each other. Okay, I wanted to go there to listen to that guy. And it was like a, probably two kilometers. I don't know how I reached there. It was millions of people literally in one square, every kilometer square. Just kind of, you know, slowed in silence, suddenly sort you're of there. Just, you're able to go through. Yes. And, and you cry for no reason. Uh -huh. I don't know if no reason is the accurate word, but my, I don't know how you say it in English, my tear channel yeah. was pouring. pouring. Yes. Well, it's a moving experience. I have to say, I moved and I listened to you because I'm thinking, I don't know about many of us long for what you just described, a sense of being able to be different, diverse, have all these different opinions, yet be united at the same time. Oh my God, yeah. No? It's there. I mean, for a short, at least for a short period. I, I saw miracles there, okay? I saw a Christian pouring water for a Muslim to pray. I saw uh, Muslims surrounding uh, Christians to pray. I saw extreme liberal women with extreme conservative men who would never, ever sit next to them in that manner. And they were just sitting there discussing. Yeah, it was a moment of... Uh, I was amazed. I mean, my God. Now you're, uh, you're contaminating me. <laughs> and people have been years fighting that, mm -hmm. trying to gain this kind of unity, this human level thing. It was just not happening. Uh, there was a... God was facilitating this. God, yeah. meaning there was a larger principle in the background. Absolutely, a much bigger force that, there. That, uh, reminded people of what it could be. I mean, someone was somehow giving personal instructions for everyone to be understanding, peaceful, <laughs> just get along. We have a bigger cause. What was the bigger cause? What was the, what in your mind, what was the hope or the dream? I know that can be said and I know there's going to be as many different perspectives as probably the million people there, but in your There mind, was a bigger cause of we deserve better mm -hmm. as humans. We just deserve better. Yeah, we deserve better than... We want to be all included mm -hmm. and we deserve better. Mm -hmm. We're not looking for to be the best or the better, we just deserve better. Mm -hmm. We need to feel better about how we live and about our country. It's interesting because one of the things that before we decided we were going to talk about this together was, uh, you know, that in the democracy we believe that people sort of represent roles they play out. So politicians, I believe, frequently play out general mindsets. We look to politicians, and correctly so, for helping us find solutions. But politicians also mirror back to us where we are in terms of a collective, you could argue. 
So, for example, if you think of the old leadership in Egypt, what would you say? What kind of mindset would uh, would 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 uh, somebody like uh, uh, Mubarak represent? Mubarak was playing on our differences. Uh -huh. He was highlighting our differences. Uh -huh especially in the very deep-seated differences of religions such as Christians and Muslims. And amazingly, during the 18 days with no security, no police on the street, not a single church was protected and nothing happened. Although when they were, had weapons and if there were things happening, I think politicians in a way or the old regime was playing on our differences. And it was they were highlighting it and mirroring it bringing out the worst in us rather than the best in us because I I didn't think they had a bigger cause of making things any better mm -hmm. because this is how they prospered. Mm -hmm. Yet, that's, I think, that's what they knew was best, you know, yeah. historically. Yes, I, I hear you. That's what works. Yes. This is how Egyptians should be treated. This is yes. how we should yes. continue. So the diversity... Because we had no faith yeah. in ourselves. So how come they have faith in oh, us? Yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah. We were part of the system, by yeah. the way, and yeah. I want to back down that. It's not them or us. I love how you say We that. were one yeah. in that sense. Yeah. We allowed it, we were okay with it. Until now, there is a, a huge struggle between freedom and security as value. Some people cannot be with the uncertainty with the unpredictability of what's next for Egypt. Yeah, that's a clash I that's saw you clash. were using. Yes, using yes. Freedom and security. And I, I, saw, that, I that. saw that after the 18 days uh -huh. passing by after the honeymoon, uh -huh. people, you know, okay, now, so what's next? Uh -huh. Come on, at least we knew what was going on. Uh -huh. Yeah, the now, security of, I know I am a me, you are you, and we're different. There's a lot of security in, the di in, in highlighting the differences. Yeah. The status quo. So back to your question about the leadership, uh, I'm not sure if I answered you clearly about yes, the leadership. Did. Okay. But say more. I mean, uh, I mean, we want to get rid of the pharaoh concept. The, the pharaoh. The pharaoh. We are. We were masters in creating pharaohs. Okay. Say more. We create them. I mean. They come, layman, Mubarak was a layman person, he said my wildest dream is to become the Egyptian ambassador in London. Uh -huh. And he said, you know, I'm coming just for probably four years and I'm leaving, I'm not really interested in that, you know, I was forced. And, uh -huh. and I remember Sadat saying the same thing, you know, uh -huh. and Abdel Nasser saying I've created the revolution just to free you people and I'm going to go back to the army. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then suddenly we kind of, we have the sacred thing for the rank. Once we come, we have the, the tendency to worship, you know. You're right, remember that. You take us, you lead the us. Pharaoh. The Pharaoh thing. And they resist it at the beginning, then they doubt, mm -hmm. and then they believe it. Mm -hmm. And then they do not just believe it. If you say otherwise, we're going to kill you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I so we bring them, yeah, we bring them in that level. So we don't, we, I think we have learned the lesson in that sense. We're not going to create pharaohs. So we would say the pharaoh, the pharaoh is like a, is a, a, go, is a, 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 a ghost or meaning part of history. Yes. Yes. It's a, it's a, one of your inheritances. Yes. This pharaoh thing. Yeah. And I so, think it's it's we're really releasing because some people said uh, one of the ex prime ministers said that we don't trust Egyptians with democracy. And they're kind of saying, okay, do you see what's going on right now? Mm -hmm. And I love what you told me about the, the consensus reality of what's going on about the Polaroid shot uh -huh. in the movie. We're uh -huh. seeing a Polaroid, we like to see things as a Polaroid shot, uh -huh. Uh -huh. as what's going on right now as a transitional mode. And we're forgetting it's a movie, it's a, why are you, it's a, it's a story. It's a story. You know, I don't know enough uh, to my great shame about um, Egyptian history and the pharaoh. What would you say was the essence or the spirit of, of what pharaohs uh, stand for or stood for? They were half gods. I mean, they were gods. Uh -huh. 
That's why when we say that this leader is a pharaoh, he's half god, half human, so mm -hmm. he cannot be wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't want to, there's a kind of a dependency mm -hmm. uh, game here. Mm -hmm. That you rely on me, you know, I'm, I'm the government, I'll do everything for you. I'll, I think it, we were able to achieve it on the economical level with more free market, yes. but yet on the political level, uh -huh. it's, the revolution happened, so we're kind of, there's a rebirth. You know, it was so interesting because you're saying it used to be men were half God and half pharaohs, yes. half God, half people, but you were also saying, I felt that the whole, uh, the whole event, the revolution was created by God. It was somebody just said, relax. It's a new type of pharaoh that appears that says, relax and uh, don't focus only what's different. Mm. Don't focus only on your human side and then have God, uh, one person in the country. Everybody's mm -hmm. has God, have you? Mm -hmm. We can be, all of us can be pharaoh. Not in one, one position, everybody can be divine and human at the same time. Yeah, I mean, it's tricky to play with words in that sense. I mean, when I say a God, I mean God who created us all in the sense of being one. And I think he created us different. And it was, we were meant to be different. I mean, we could have been similar somehow. We could have all been uh, from Zurich and uh, from Switzerland. We're all gathered there and the whole world is called Switzerland. Yeah. And we all have the same family values, yes. the same this. Yes. But it was meant that we were different, yes. and we, we need to get along with that yes. fact. And Some people are and continuing it. to resist that yes. fact. Yes, and enjoy it. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yes, exactly. Yes. I, I so much enjoy sitting here with you because your life is being so different and your experiences are so different. But yet I feel um, we sort of known each other for a long time. I think I have that yeah, the same I feeling. Yes. I that from you yesterday. And I know that we're not here by coincidence. No. I mean, I never thought I'm going to meet you. Yeah, I never same. thought I'm going to be sitting here. See, I feel that too. <laughs> yes. No, thank you. Thank, thank you. you for that. That's thank very you very cool. much. It's a good moment for you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Thanks that's a cool. lot. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Awesome.